go. Yeah, welcome to uh, Night Hacking. Today, I will replace Stephen to give him a little bit free time. He's so busy. <laughs> and Much with me better is, looking. Yeah, 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 he's smiling, so it's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, and with me is uh, Zach Shelby from Arm. Welcome. Thank you. At uh, J Focus Night Hacking stage. So, um, so what is your impression of J Focus so far? Awesome. I mean, I'm really impressed to see this many developers uh, from the Nordics and uh, actually all over. Like, the list is all over the world. So, for a Swedish based developer conference, very good. Yeah, and I think it's, it's, I remember the conference when it started a couple of years ago and it was quite small, happening in a, some cinema, but in, it was really a lot of tracks have been Swedish and today it's. Yeah, it's an international big conference, right? So right. we have a lot of people here from all over the world, so it's really nice. So we would like to talk about IoT stuff. 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 Stuff like security. Sure. So, um, yeah. Some words from you about security on IoT. So it's, I think for me, my impression is there is a lack of uh, support for security in, uh, in the IoT in general also from the big vendors, so it's, uh, that's my impression, so I don't know. Yeah, I think um, it, the attitude for people making embedded devices uh, so far has been that these are not internet connected. Yeah. We're just making a standalone thing and never, nobody will ever connect it up, except for us when we're configuring it at the factory, right? Yeah. With the default password, right, and the default user account. <laughs> so security has really just been totally overlooked and it was never an issue in the old days of Embedded. We didn't connect these yeah. things in the same way, especially not to the public internet. So I think um, you know, a lot of really high profile cases over the last few years, um, people are starting to realize that they need to put real effort into security, understand not only the technology, but how to manage it. Um, the other issue we've had in Embedded is that security was kind of like a, a, a special add-on. Right. It was never the default. You had to pay yeah. extra for it. You had to sign some special agreement to get the security. It was this <laughs> special it, thing, right? It was a feature. It was an extra, yeah. And I think the attitude is changing. People are realizing mm. that um, security has to be in there all the time. It's not something that we as technology providers can just make as an extra add-on. Yeah. So out so of the box. Is TLS. there also some kind of hardware security you, you can think of? That is not only software, but, but really something that is, comes with the hardware itself? Yeah, we're starting to see that actually on embedded platforms. Um, and it's a necessity. So we, we're seeing more public key cryptography come into use in embedded. But what that means is that in, in the smaller embedded platforms, even 32-bit, computing ECC and software takes a little time. So if you're in very low, right. low power applications, you want to accelerate that. So we are starting to see ECC and AES crypto blocks mm -hmm. make their way into standard parts, oh, okay. which is very cool, right? So actual system on a chip, mm -hmm. Cortex M0, M3. So you can add it to your device yep. on the hardware and then oh, just that, use it. Yep. Oh, that's nice. And then we do software assisted support for mm -hmm. that. So when you're doing like your TLS libraries mm -hmm. and you go to do an ECC crypto operation, you automatically go use the hardware. And that's nice. You can also use it on very tiny devices then. Exactly. Um, the other trend we're seeing is that it's not only important to have um, communication security, but to actually have on-chip uh, asset protection. Ah, okay. So we have a technology from ARM we've actually come up with called CryptoBox, mm -hmm. which lets us take advantage of some of the ARM architecture. We have something called an MPU, okay. which segments memory, ah. memory protection mm -hmm. unit. We can actually take advantage of that to do software, hardware assisted uh, uh, protection of memory spaces. So we can store oh. keys, oh, that's do crypto operations without the application code actually having access. Okay. And that's cool. That can you do that also on application based? So that means yes. crypt memory parts for certain yes. applications? Oh, that, that's So you really can actually put an application inside of the protected area. Wow. So we have that technology for mobile for a long time. It's something called Trust Zone. Mm -hmm. So we have trusted execution and trust zone and mobile. You can run secure stuff and then you can run Android in the unsecured oh, area. Okay. That, we know about that as a model and now it's coming to embedded for the first time. 
Yeah, and I think it's needed, right? Yeah. It's really something that it's still not there. Everybody connects everything to the net, right? And it's it's so hyped, but we still miss the security stuff. Ex absolutely. Yeah, and there was one other thing um, we talked about already was the the software ecosystem. So, and I think this is really something which is in the embedded world. That that's one of the biggest problems because it's so fragmented. It's everyone does its own thing and. The, but that's history. That's how it started, yep. right? Yeah, and I think it's how all kind of new markets start, right? The sure. It's, there's lots of different segments, and everyone does their own thing, and they, a lot of smaller companies just want to hold on to that, that special thing they do. But I think what we found from more mature markets like mobile or cloud is that when you have really mature software toolkits, everybody benefits. It creates kind of this common ecosystem. It creates common market mass, right? So you think there could be some open standard for everyone? Absolutely. I don't think there'll be just one. I think you'll have like, a, as you see in cloud, you have different sets of toolkits mm -hmm. that you can use together. Okay. Um, I think we'll see that evolve and embedded. Um, from ARM, we're, we're putting together the first kind of open software operating system, ecosystem for embedded called Embed. Mm -hmm. Focused more on low power internet connected stuff, but the idea is to put all the open standards, all the security tools like the crypto box I just talked right. about, TLS, asymmetric crypto, in there by default. So do you have any response from the, from the vendors that produce that stuff? So what do they think about that or others? So is it, uh, is it something ARM tries to push forward? Or? We actually do it with partners. It's the interesting thing. So mm -hmm. alone, we'd never be able to do that and maintain it. But we actually launched with 26 partners the end of last year, oh, wow. and together we're going and bringing that operating system out there. So the response has actually been really good. So that means there's some kind of a criti critical mass already of Correct. people that support this idea to yep. have a common standard for, for certain things. Yeah, I think it's all about market, right? If, if by making your own solution every time you can access a few thousand customers versus a uh, yeah, right. billion devices, right? So that's the kind of access to opportunity we're yeah. giving. And well, that's what everybody says. In a, in a couple of years, it will be billions of devices connected, but then you need something. To something in, in common. Gen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like Otherwise, it won't work. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's interesting. So do you think that Java will play a role in that? I think it will. Um, Java, of course, will play a huge role on the cloud side, right? I don't see cloud development for IoT being all that different from, than cloud development for, yeah. for enterprise applications. Mm -hmm. um, even on embedded devices, we're seeing kind of different classes of devices. At the high end, we have the technology to do Java. Um, yeah. The new Java ME8 release is awesome, closer to the SE8. Mm -hmm. And we can run it on kind of the higher end of Cortex-M microcontrollers, cheap, cheap chips. It's the M3, M4 stuff? Yeah, M3, yeah. M4, M7. Yeah. Um, and I think you'll start to see different classes of developers. You'll have platform developers that mm -hmm. do the low-level drivers. And you might have you know, high-layer application developers in a team that only do application logic. Mm -hmm. And that might be a great case for Java ME. Mm -hmm. OK. Well, that sounds interesting. So, and, um, but I think on the base, it's still C, right? That this is the stuff that you. C Actually, we're seeing a lot more C++ okay. these days. Oh. So we're doing more object-oriented C++, okay. keeping interfaces clean, more modular. Mm -hmm. And compilers have improved to the point where it's just as efficient as C. So what is the role of assemblers? Is it also still, because it was in the past, and I remember you, you still do a little bit of assembler, but it's yeah. more low layer routines. Mm -hmm. If you're maybe optimizing some cryptography, you might do a little bit of assembler, but we don't do a whole lot anymore. Okay. So and if we if we come back to the software uh, environment, so so the the common thing, do you think that maybe some things like the Java community can also help to to make stuff happens, so would it make sense to try and involve people from that community because it's big? I think so. I mean, I'm sure we're going to see you know, a community around IoT forming on the, the cloud side from yeah. the Java community. Mm -hmm. It's a natural starting place. But with uh, you know, Java ME8, I think we're going to see you know, third-party contributions for that, projects. So it would be great to see kind of an open source community form around ME8. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we just just next week, we're contributing in a whole co-op implementation to OpenJDK, mm -hmm. targeted both at ME and oh, SE nice. oh. and EE. Right. Right. So we're, we're kind of targeting the whole, the whole Java family now. I think that, that's something that um, the Java community can help with. OK, well, that sounds great. So 
Anything else you would like to talk about? Are you? Yeah, I think um, one, one thing we didn't talk about is that th there's a future for scripting languages as well. Right, right. This came up, it came up right. th this morning is that you know, there's going to be a role not only for, for Java, but also for JavaScript. And it's going to sure. be really interesting a as we see you know, things like you know, this, this sport watch. You can, yeah, that you was can, amazing. That is you can a run nice use very case. simple yeah. uh, script apps. You know, I want to see my heart rate multiplied by my speed, you know, some <laughs> crazy number that matters to me, I can actually do that. And JavaScript would be a great way to be able to do it. Okay. It's the stuff you mentioned that you can, for example, hook up the, the watch to the cloud yep. using your phone and then do something in a web editor yep. and put Push the script down. back to the cloud, over the cloud, over the device to the, yep. to the watch. And then yeah, just try it out. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a really nice idea. So that means IoT is really also language-wise. It's the whole spectrum, right? So sure. nearly. If, if we take things like Korba or stuff, <laughs> old stuff out there. But then uh, I think, yeah, it's, uh, that's fascinating. So what is your, what do you think about IoT in general in, in the future? Is it a bright future or is it just a hype at the moment? No, it's, it's absolutely hype. That's yeah. for sure, right? <laughs> I mean, you see everybody putting energy into it. But there's a reason for hype, right? You need hype to get. Yeah big companies putting real resources into it, getting the technology platforms mm -hmm. ready, um, investments, et cetera. So the hype is good in a way. It brings us resources. You have to make the best out of it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Take advantage of it. Um, the hype will go away, and then people <laughs> yeah, will move on, yeah. except for people who are really doing something. And I think that's healthy. Um, but IoT definitely has a big future. It's really about innovation. It's about uh, getting technology for people to go create new things, right? Hook, hook things into real yeah, services, yeah. create new value from that. And I think um, that was where we'll see a lot of startups, Kickstarter projects, yeah. Yeah, yeah, people doing completely new things that we, we as technologists don't even think of always. Yeah, that's right. So do you think we are there yet? Or is it still a couple of years to just go up the hill and then at some point it will going down again? So I think we already passed the hype peak. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that this winter at some point, I think we passed it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it is a really good time for people who are doing startups. Awesome time. This yeah. is the time technology starts to be available. You can go do it. There's, there's resources. So I think we'll start to see kind of the upswing of IoT where the hype calms down. People mm -hmm. are doing real things. People are innovating. Um, we start to you know, get rid of bound barriers between cooperation, right? Yeah, yeah. Companies can work together. They can go solve real problems for people mm -hmm. rather than just... Uh, <laughs> fighting yeah, over who's fight. got the best technology. Yeah, right? exactly. So yeah, that, that, that's interesting. OK, I think, um, I think we are done. Okay. And uh, it was a pleasure to have you here. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for attending. Great to be at JFocus. Um, yeah, so there will be another night hacking session today, I'm not sure. It's in about an hour, OK. And uh, yeah, don't forget to go come to the party this afternoon. I think it's 6.30 or, yeah. So see you and uh, have fun.